The stress model says all behavior arises from a state of stress. Okay, in between the behavior and stress is the presence of a primary emotion. Those of you who are in the network for a period of time, you're aware of the stress model. In between the behavior and the stress is the presence of a primary emotion. Two primary emotions. There's love and there's fear. Right? It's through the expression, the process, and the understanding of the fear that we calm the stress and diminish the behavior. Essentially what the stress model is saying here is that when you as the, as, when you as the parent experience your child's behavior, and this can be any number of behaviors up here, and, you know, talking back, um, defiance, uh, let's see, aggression. When you experience your child's negative behavior, it's coming from their stress and then their fear, and then that's driving the behavior. As I said earlier, that stress is sending out a vibration. That stress is sending out a vibration, which is going to signal your stress response. Now, you have, there, there's an option you have here, okay? You, ha you can experience that stress, and you can respond, or you can experience it, and you can react. If you choose to react, you operate out of fear. If you choose to respond, you move over into love. What you have to do is you have to breathe. That's just a good first step. Breathe and calm your own stress because, see, nine times out of ten, you're going to have an initial fear reaction. All right? So you've got to catch it. When you have that initial fear reaction, you breathe and you start to calm it. As you start to calm it, you're going to be moving over into more of a love space. Why? Because all of a sudden, you are triggering oxytocin. Very, very important. When you do something as simple as breathe, when you do something as simple as reflect, when you do something, something as simple as practice mindfulness, you are triggering oxytocin. That oxytocin is going to allow you to be flexible with these negative behaviors. It's not the behavior. Remember, a behavior is just a signal for something underneath. You have to attend to the stress. When you calm your own oxytocin, when you calm your own stress, trigger your own oxytocin, you move more into love, you reduce your fear, and when you do that, you're able to be more present to your child's negative behavior. When you can be more present to your child's negative behavior, you start calming their fear, you start reducing their stress, and that's where healing begins to happen. This is an ongoing process, but it starts with you and I. It starts with oxytocin, and we all have the ability to utilize this very powerful hormone. So let me see if I have any hands being raised. I know I've got some questions. I'm just having a really challenging time with those questions at the moment. Let me try it again. Oh, uh, let's go up here. Okay. Okay, uh, this is a question that says, you say that boys need to wrestle for healthy development. Whenever my older son wrestles or tickers, tickles with his younger brother or even myself, he becomes very aggressive and seems like he is bent on revenge, almost frenzied. Any advice to help him? See, that's a perfect question. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I love it. <laughs> Isn't that a good question? It's a really good question. Be because, I mean, that is a prime example of the child is engaging in the activity, He's getting stressed, he's getting stressed, he's getting more frenzied, he's getting more frenzied. He doesn't have a strong enough oxytocin response, so he's getting more frenzied. And then all of a sudden it seems like he's, like he's wanting revenge. And that's why it's so important to wrestle. Because the parent who's wrestling all of a sudden stops. I remember my, my nephew, when my nephew was like three, I'd be wrestling with him. And he'd get so worked up, and he, could, he still does it now, he's 13. And I'll just stop. And I'll just be breathing. And he's still wrestling me. Like he's still frenzied. But all of a sudden I stop. I'm just calm. And he's like all over me. And like in seconds, he starts to calm down. He stops and he says, what's wrong? Or let's wrestle some more. And then all I have to do is say, okay, but we just got to calm down a little bit. It's just getting, a, it's getting to be a little too much for me. And see, and then what I'm doing is I'm just like... Boom, I, I create this burst of oxytocin in his brain. He calms down, and then we can start wrestling again. If we start amping up again, then I see I'm self-regulating. 
Okay, I'm an oxytocin teacher. And so I would say for your son, it wouldn't be good for him to wrestle with his brothers. He needs to wrestle with dad or he needs to wrestle with mom. So it's not good for him to wrestle with his brothers because he doesn't have a healthy enough oxytocin response to be able to calm himself down. So someone's going to get hurt. So he needs to wrestle with dad or he needs to wrestle with mom. That way they can be the regulators of his arousal system when he starts to get activated. Do you want to add anything to that, Helene? I, I think that's, you know, when, when you talk so much about that window of tolerance, that really is kind of the dance that we play, is being able to learn to help them stretch that window and be able to, to take in more sensory-wise, to be able to expand their ability to handle the stress. And we know now that, you know, obviously that is through um, oxytocin and being able to do that, but that dance is really so important. Oh, and that's, that's an excellent way to put it. It's a dance. You're dancing. If you're, if you're dancing with your partner, and this just happens to be in this situation, it's your child. If you're dancing to music, and all of a sudden your child starts break dancing, and you're like slow dancing, and your child starts break dancing, what are you going to do? you gotta, you got to stop. And you got to say, wait a minute. Let, we we got to catch the beat here. we got to catch the rhythm. Let's breathe. Let's slow down. Now let's reengage. And then you start dancing again. See, and that's attunement. That's so very important. Well, and you know, you know what, too, Brian, I think is that when you go into it knowing that it's a dance, it really shifts your perspective. It helps you be much more mindful going into it, which is what you're saying about a tune. But if you think about, too, that if 80% of everything that we learn is through modeling and then 90% of everything we do is just out of pure habit. So we're just stuck in so many patterns that are so much habit. So to break that is really just becoming mindful. And mindful can be as simple as just changing the perspective in which you're playing. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's a great, great, great uh, comment. And let me mention something to you all real quick. Um, it says here, 16 reasons you should join the post-parenting inner circle tonight. If you've enjoyed this presentation, you can take a 16-week webinar course. And I know that's, that's a lot. Okay, it's, it's a lot of information. I created, a, I did a 16-week program. Every week, you'll get a, a, a separate module in your email box every week. And this is, if, if you join the inner circle, and the, the post-parenting inner circle is a monthly membership program where every month you get access to me, you get email access to me for your, your challenging situations and questions. You're on a call with me every single month where I'm answering questions or I have an expert. You receive a journal in the mail every month that's specific this month. It's healing trauma. So if you, if you sign up for the Inner Circle tonight, then you'll get the healing trauma journal. You'll get a CD. Um, you get two audio CDs in the mail. And then you get access to the members only website, which has like two years of journals, two years of audio recordings. It has all of our webinars. This webinar, many of you have asked, when will this webinar be available? It will eventually be on Post University, but it will be on the Inner Circle members only site within the week. So within the week, you can have access to this webinar and others that, have, that were not even disclosed, have not even been disclosed to the network. But more than that, you can start the 16-week course Tomorrow morning, if you sign up tonight, I have 40, 40 slots available. If you sign up tonight, you'll get, you'll get the 16-week program. You'll get a course every single week. You'll immediately start to receive the journal. That will get mailed to you. And then every single month, you'll be emailed with all the information that goes, that's a part of being in the inner circle. And a 16-week course is like 10 years of my information that's, that's been assimilated. I've got lots of Inner Circle members on the webinar tonight. This is a $29.95 a month program. So if, if you can cancel at any time, so you can take the whole 16-week course. It was a regular $997 program. But you can cancel at any time. I think it's invaluable. I think that parents and professionals need this repetition of information. They need to, to hear it. They need to see it. They need to experience it because this is a different paradigm. If you want to sign up tonight and be one of the 40, you go to postinnercircle.com forward slash welcome. 
this is the website you go to. You sign up, and you'll immediately start receiving information. It's postinnercircle.com forward slash welcome. Got 40 people that I can take tonight and get started on the 16-week course. And we've got people all over the world taking this course right now. So I really, really, really want to encourage you to, you know, skip dinner for, for a week, once a month, and, and get to some education and get to some empowerment. So again, it's postinnercircle.com forward slash welcome. All right. So let's look here. We've got a, 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 this is my parenting continuum. On the left side of the screen, we have responsibility and love. On the right side of the screen, we have reactivity and fear. Now, you have a number line here. You got 0, you got negative 1 to negative 10 all the way up to negative 100, positive 1 to positive 10 all the way up to positive 100. My contention is this. The most common things we do in parenting, just like the most common things we do in education, these things sit on the negative side of the spectrum of reactivity and fear. Those are things like timeout, isolation, spanking, consequences, behavior mod, yelling, spanking, uh, and res restraint, and medication rather than modification of environments and relationships. These are the most common things we do, and guess what these things don't do? These things do not increase oxytocin. These things increase stress. What's the common denominator of all these things? They increase stress and diminish oxytocin. Guess what side of the continuum they set on? At the far end of the continuum is the death penalty, negative 100. We don't realize that these things set on the continuum of the death penalty because these are negative 1 through 10. These are the things we've been doing for generations and generations and generations of parenting. This is traditional parenting. And we wonder why our children are in the state that they're in. Because we've got generations of parenting that have gone into creating these dynamics. We've got parents who parent their children this way. We've got parents who were parented this way. We've got grandparents who parented this way. And it goes on and on and on and on. And the only way we're going to change this for our own grandchildren, for our own great-grandchildren, is if we interrupt this cycle now and start doing things that are rich in oxytocin. These are the things that are going to help your children to heal through trauma. They're going to help your child to learn optimally in school. They're going to help your child learn how to be in a monogamous relationship, as Stacey Annan pointed out. They're going to help your child learn how to be in relationship, period. These are the things that are going to help you to be able to create attachment and bonding in your relationship with your child and help them to heal their trauma. Things like time in instead of time out. Bring that child in. Containment, reducing the space, being flexibility, being flexible. Having more understanding, understanding the dynamic of fear. Emotional processing, breathing, limits. Setting limits is so important, but you've got to understand how to set limits. You have, you have to understand how to set limits effectively and what the whole purpose of setting limits is for. It's for teaching. It's not for us to be in control as, as parents. Affection and discipline. The definition of discipline is to teach, not to punish. These are the things that are oxytocin rich. These are the things that are going to help your child learn how to effectively regulate. These things over here are going to create more stress. If you go to postinstitute.com, we have a, a ton of re educational resources to reinforce the points that I'm making here that go into in, in depth into these things. My new book, Fear to Love, talks about a lot of these things. Like I said, the, the parenting inner circle, postinnercircle.com forward slash welcome. Every single month, you're getting something that's reinforcing these points. In fact, the coming month for July is the behavior issue. So the whole issue of the journal is going to be specific to dealing with behaviors. My book, The Great Behavior Breakdown, that's another excellent resource that gives you specific things you can do for problem behaviors. But all the things that you're going to learn are going to be things that are going to be increasing oxytocin. And that's our goal. 